Hi, I'm Mike Leck, your host for Adventures in Scale Modeling. You're about to see four programs from the first season of our series. Each program is designed to be both informative as well as entertaining. These shows will provide new techniques as well as modeling suggestions to benefit both the novice as well as the expert modeler. So sit back and enjoy Adventures in Scale Modeling. Adventures in Scale Modeling is made possible through funding by the Tester Corporation, manufacturer of hobby products for over 50 years. Leck, and welcome to Adventures in Scale Modeling. Our modern airport facilities rival the great railway stations of the past and have become architectural centerpieces for countless cities. Like their predecessors, these modern facilities must serve thousands of people every day and have become more than just a place to go from here to there. Beyond providing their basic functional need, the modern airport facility must be aesthetically pleasing and must house a variety of services for both airline and passenger. On today's show, we're going to build an airport terminal. We're going to visit with the architects who designed this airport, and we're going to learn a little bit about design and function in architecture. But first, let's go to the museum and begin building this vital support to transportation, the airport terminal. The terminal we're going to build gives us an opportunity to study the importance of support facilities to our transportation system. It also provides us with some new and exciting modeling challenges. Jim Kelly, our master model maker, is downstairs in the museum workshop, ready to share his expertise with us in this area of model building. Let's go downstairs and join him. Building a model airport certainly seems like an interesting project. Jim, what kind of progress are you making? Well, I'm just getting started, Mike, on this uh, airport kit, and you're just in time. We'll open up the box and see what's in That's it. That's great. I get to be part of it from the beginning. Absolutely. All right, what do we have first? Well, first we have all kinds of plastic parts. These are still on the sprues. You know, these are cast in uh, casting machines under pressure, and the uh, plastic runs out through all the uh, cavities and makes the walls. They're all in one piece of plastic. Okay, what else we got? Got clear window material. All right. We got what you've got to have every oh, time. The important instruction sheet. The, in the instruction sheet. Yeah, I see. Are the parts numbered in this kit? The, the parts are all numbered uh, on the backs. Since this is a structure, the uh, numbers can be on the inside, on the walls, and they won't oh, hurt I anything. I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I see there's no explanation of these parts here. How important is that? Well, uh, these kits go uh, together simply enough that you can get by without the written instructions. And kit making is an international business. Um, the preliminary instructions are done in seven languages, so you can see what kind of a problem they would have if they had to write every step out in oh, seven I different see languages. What you're saying. Okay. What's our first construction step? Well, the first thing you do with a plastic kit is wash the walls because okay. when they're made in those injection molding machines, they quite often have um, mold release on them, an oily substance that's oh, used to help okay. get the mold out. That's right. We want to make sure we wash them. So what are we going to do? Just go over the sink and clean them up? Right. We'll go over the sink and we'll clean them up. All right. Let's up. walk over here. Okay. All right. Now, what are you going to do? Just the regular cleaner, household we, cleaner? Household cleaner. All right. Squirt that on there. All right. That just usually takes it right off, doesn't it? Right. Okay. Then we'll just rinse off the cleaner with some water. All right. It's generally best if you let uh, these parts air dry. Okay. Well, here, I'll put it over on the drawing table. Lay it over there. Okay. Now, you know what You know what we ought to do next while we're here at the sink? I bet you we're going to wash our hands. We should wash our hands because we've gone to the work to get uh, those oils off the plastic, but we have oil on our hands, so we don't want to go put it oh, oil. Oh, that makes sense. We can't yeah. wash our hands uh, enough because we want to make sure that the oil is off of our hands, and we just took the oil off the parts. We don't want to put the part, you know, the oil back on the parts. We want to make sure our hands are nice and clean. Right. I notice you have a piece drying there. Is that ready to go? That's ready to go. So uh, let's take that back over to the workbench. Let me grab that and let's get to work on this model. This is going to be okay. a nice looking piece to build. All right, what are we going to do now? Well, now it's a matter of taking these pieces off, but we ought to stop and think. Are we going to paint the model or are we going to build it straight out of the box? Are we going to paint it plastic? Now, is that a modeler's choice? Sure, that's a modeler's choice. Okay, you want to try, give it a try here? Sure, let's, uh, 
Let's paint it and see how it goes. Okay, what's the best way to do this? Right on the workbench or where? Well, the best way would be either outdoors in the fresh air or with a spray booth. But this is a well-ventilated room, and we'll only have a little paint mist. So okay, so what are we going to do? Bad. Well, let's lay down a piece of newspaper. All right, well, let me move the kit out of the way. Okay. Just regular newspaper from this morning, huh? Sure. All right. All right. All right, here's my part. What, you want to just lay it down here? Does that lay that down? No. In any special way? No. Okay, let's see what you're going to do. Okay, this is just spray, uh, spray paint out of the can. You hear that ball bearing rattling in there? That, yeah. That, that stirs the paint for you. That looks really great. And you know, the, the spray doesn't go off too far in a distance, so we really could use newspaper right on our workbench. Sure, you have very good control. I haven't gotten more than an inch or two away from the part anywhere on the paper. Ah, I see what you're saying. Well, put this aside to dry, and what do we do now? Okay, well, you know, there are other ways we can uh, finish walls. And uh, one other way is to put a wash. Okay, let me put this down here, out of the way. Because I'm right. interested in this, in this wash. What are we going to do with the wash? Well, why don't you hand me another wall out of the box, and we'll see what we can do with it. Okay. Well, all the walls are sitting over there, Jim. Okay, well, we'll use one of these walls from over here. Okay. This is uh, a mixture of paint, a small amount of paint, and a large amount of thinner. Now, all that's in there is just uh, thinner and, wa and, and what? And enamel paint. Oh, okay. Now, let me see what you're going to do. Now, watch what happens. This is like magic. Oh, my. That is really nice. See how that paint runs in there and it accents the brick detail. Oh my goodness, you're right. Now we could use black, but any color would work. This uh, is called a wash technique. The wash because of the thinness of the paint? Right. Because we're washing really... the paint, we're really washing the paint on instead of the Let me give it a try. Paint. I want to give this a try. I like the brick. The brick really comes out of there, doesn't it? Right. So just uh, load it up with paint, just touch it gently. Touch it anywhere and... Uh, It'll run out through those uh, oh mortar, mortar lines. Isn't that nice? That sure is nice. Okay. Now this again, is this something that the modder would decide to do? Right, that's a decision that you would make. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to build our kit straight out of the box, plain unadorned plastic walls. Okay, well, I would think that the parts back on the drying table are ready to be uh, cut, would you say? Are they dry by this time? I think they probably are. All right, grab them and let's give them a cut. We haven't okay. cut sprues for a while. Let's see what we're going to do here. Okay. What's the best way to do it? Well, there are several ways. Frankly, a kit like this... Just break them off You like can that? break them off, and you're not going to damage these parts because they're heavy. But delicate parts, you should be a little more careful. You can uh, use whatever tool works. Uh, cutting nippers like this can do the job. Just snap it off there like that? Snap it off, and then clean it up. Okay. Sometimes... This little tool, one that everybody has around the house, works out just fine. Well, here's fine. a piece here you can maybe clean up there. Maybe I can, yeah. yeah. there you go. All right. Well, it certainly is very easy. Now, what do we do? Clean up the parts from where? Here? From, what do we do? Okay, next. Okay, we take off the individual parts, and the first instruction is to uh, install the windows. Okay. Sounds like an easy thing to do. We have the windows laying here. Clear plastic material. Again, we should wash these, but we'll skip that for right now. Okay. All right. Um, well, here's a wall. Here's a piece of window glass. All right, what do you want me to do? Glue that in place? Yeah, why don't I let you glue that in place? I'll, oh, I'll open seems up the glue easy for enough you. to me. You can apply the glue with a brush. Oh, okay, great. Let me just dip it in Let's here. Let's see how you do. I just run it down through here like this. All right, mm -hmm. some in here. And I'll put some in here. Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. You're not doing so well there. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Well, you said glue it on there, Jim. Well, you tried to glue it from the outside, and you got some glue on the window itself. Let me take a close look at it. Yeah, that's what we call the crazy effect. Oh, my. You know how you right. could have avoided that? Oh, wow, well, you're work, the expert. Give me the tip. <laughs> work on the back side of the wall. Oh, okay. Let me see what you're going to do. Right, now we can flow it in from here. Oh, okay. It'll run out, and it'll fill the uh, area between the window material and the wall but it won't run out on the glass itself. Well, let me try another one. Let me take... Okay, let we'll me... Get, I'm going to give you another chance, all Okay, right? I'm going to break off a piece of uh, glass here. Let me clean it up a little bit. See what I can do with it. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's important to clean everything off like this also, even if it's the parts like this? Well, no. You don't, you don't need to do that. It's kind of a waste of time because that's going to go on the inside of the wall. No one will see that anyway. 
Oh, it's an important tip. Now, here's a situation where we could save time because the glass isn't going to be seen from the underside of the building, so we can just go ahead and snap it off and put it in place. Save yourself a lot of time with a tip like this. Now, what do you want me to do? Glue it in place? Right. Here you go. All right, now I'll try the tip that you just gave me. Okay. I'm going to place the glass on the underside of the building and then just run my glue from behind, correct? Right. Okay, but I'll make sure it's, it's lined up properly. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it okay to hold it with my finger in place? Sure. Okay, then I'll, I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. A little bit of glue. Just touch it. Oh, I can Voila, yeah. see that yeah. one out there? Just runs right underneath the window panes. Yeah. Perfect control. Yeah, you're right. I do have perfect control. All right. You want to try another one? Yeah, why not? I'm getting great at this now. Yeah, you're, you're, you're showing a lot of promise. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Jim. <laughs> okay. We'll just glue it here now. All right. All right. There it is. Okay, now... I'm building... anxious to see the walls come up, buddy. What are we going to do next? Okay, next, that's just what we'll do. We'll, have, we'll show how some walls come up. All right. I've got the base of the building right here. That base plate's uh, looking pretty special. Would it have some ridge lines in here for guiding us, or what do we have? Yeah, those help you position the walls. So all you got to do is just go where the guidelines are, and you should be all right. This is a airport uh, building, and this is a control tower. Oh, okay. It goes right here. This is a good wall to start with because it's in the, it's in the middle, and so any mistakes that we make... Uh, going in either direction oh, will be more easily correct ah, I see what you're saying. than if we were working from one end toward the other. Okay. Same procedure. All right. I'm gluing it right in place. Do that right in. Okay, looks great. Sure. Our first piece of the airport. Notice I did that from the inside. Yes, I did notice that. There's another reason for that? Uh, well, just again, so that it uh, keeps it a little neater. The solvent uh, doesn't come oh, out on the okay. outside. So you're going to put the other side wall on now? Put this wall on. Let me give you a hand. Why don't you hold it now and glue it? That's a good idea because you need three hands really for this. Okay. Put a little bit of glue down in here. Right. Let me get some more glue on this paintbrush. Okay. All right. This is looking great. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like our airport's really coming together. Looks to me like we're on our way. Well, Jim, why don't you continue to build up the rest of these walls here, and we're going to go visit an architectural firm and learn a little bit about airport design. The Charlotte Douglas International Airport was designed by the architectural firm of Odell Associates. I'm here at the firm now in front of their model of the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. Right now, I'm going to spend some time speaking with Mr. Roy Johnson of Odell Associates. Mr. Johnson, welcome to Adventures in Scale Modeling. My pleasure, Mike. Well, we're glad you're here. Mr. Johnson, I always heard that form follows function in architecture. Could you explain it to us in more general terms? Certainly. One of the major concerns in the design process of a building is to understand the functions that that building is trying to respond to. And so in the process of design, the shape of the building and the forms that it follows come out of a full understanding and a response to those functional requirements. Well, how important are models to an architectural firm such as yours? How do you use them? Models are very important. I think the two major areas that we find models to be most useful in is in the design process so that we fully understand the building and that it is responding to its functional requirements. And in terms